Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Stephanie Tan. She's the mission coordinator of St. Benedict's Church. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Geraldine. <laughs> it's great to have you because I know you're a very busy woman, so it's fantastic to have you in our program. I'm glad I can um, <laughs> sit with you for a bit. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you weren't always a mission coordinator. Mm. Um, you have a journey of what led you to become a mission coordinator. How did you come to faith in God? And well, um, it's a very long story, <laughs> um, as with most stories. But the short version is, um, I'm I, I was born Catholic, mm -hmm. right? Born to parents um, that were quite fervent in their faith. Um, and I think like with most people born into a Catholic family, it's, it becomes part of your routine and your habit. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was the case for me. Um, I also felt that um, my relationship, particularly with my mom, prevented me from really, really um, embracing the faith. Like I wanted to be different from her. Mm, and like a she, rebel. Yeah, and if she was the Catholic one, I wanted to be a bit less of that. So for many years, um, especially teenage years, all the way through to um, my 30s, I was not really going to church unless I, I dragged myself there or um, I was dragged there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's how you went to church, you were dragged there. Yeah, it was that kind of a feeling yeah. and there's a lot of guilt around yeah. it and you know, it's that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not actually sure how I came to faith, but how I see it, like I don't know the truth of the story yet, but um, my dad and I were very close and he passed away. Mm. Um, it's, it's around eight, nine years now. And um, I was told um, one time that if I want to find him or feel him, or like, or, or I think it was something like, you can be close to your dad mm. in church. Ah. And I remember thinking like, it's absurd. It's ridiculous, uh -huh. but I was pretty desperate. Mm. So I, I was pretty desperate. I was willing to, to try anything mm. at that point. And I did, uh, I, I went to church and, and I wouldn't go to a mass because um, I, it was not something I, it didn't fit within my schedule. So I would pop in to church um, and I would sit. It would usually be quiet. And I, I remember thinking, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what to do, I c but I can do three minutes. That's great. And, and what was your experience from going to church? It started with three minutes and then five. And then I started to think, oh, maybe I'll listen to a song and you know like how worship songs are? Mm. They go on forever, right? So it became 15 minutes, 20. And over a couple of months and years, that time grew uh -huh. and it really somehow became my, um, my, my place of Comfort. peace. Mm. Um, I think I innocently, accidentally met God there. I think he, I, I don't think I met him. I, I feel like I sat there until 
one day I felt like he found me. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, I think that's the story. That's yeah. the start of the story. Wow. What did you find about the character of God? There was sitting there. Did you feel that God was an accepting, loving God, or did you just feel that somehow it was reaching you? I feel like he is loving, but mm. I think it it feels a little bit like mercy. It's mm. like this girl has got no idea how to find me. I'm going to go meet her. Mm. Mm. So you experience the mercy towards yourself or to, from God? F from him. It was, it was as though like he was like, you don't really need to do anything and you don't really need to know anything. It's mm. just the fact that you're here. Um, I'm just I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to come. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Was it kind of like a, almost a soaking when you sat there somehow you could something was happening that you maybe no, maybe hard to pin but you but you felt that acceptance that love. I didn't feel it then or rather I didn't know what I felt. Mm. But in hindsight now mm. I definitely feel that like you know that it was um, it was a big hug. It was that, mm. um, that kind of a safe embrace. Um, mm. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful, and that's so heartfelt, and that's so real. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Um, and then where to from there? So I, I, I think I developed a habit for adoration. And I started to look for a church that had, um, not adoration first. I was thinking this, right? I wanted my kids to go to, to mass and not feel like they were dragged. Mm. So I was church hopping for a while. The area where I lived in mm. had um, very quiet mm -hmm. communities. Um, and I found myself at St. Ben's. Um, and as we were attending Mass mm. here, um, one of the homilies. Yeah, before we hear about the yeah. homily, which will go after the break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Stephanie Tan. She's the mission coordinator of St. Benedict's. Hi, Stephanie. You shared uh, about how you were, um, were church hopping and you were looking for a place where um, your children could go, but they didn't, you didn't want them to feel dragged into church. Mm -hmm. So what happened after that? Well, I remember clearly there was a homily that um, I was sitting, a mass I was sitting through, and, and within the homily, um, the priest said something that really touched me. Mm. Um, it was, if you, if you want to be guaranteed a prayer, right, a prayer that's, that, that God will answer, mm. it's this, it's, just pray for him to draw you closer to him, right? Because that's all he wants. Mm. So you're guaranteed that. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's so simple. Mm. I can pray that. I don't know if I wanted it, but I was like, I, 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 I can pray that, right? And I started daily and that, that was my simple prayer. And I think, um, I think that has really worked in my life. Um, that's why I'm working at a church now. Wow, it's amazing that that simple and that clarity yeah. has led you to the point where you're yeah, now. Yeah, the pureness of that prayer. Yeah, mm. now involved in ministry yourself. Yeah. 
Wow. So you obviously through this, your experience, you really are able to connect with people who don't have faith. Mm, yeah, and, and, people and that's who, where my heart is. Yeah, yeah and people who don't, um, are not sure about coming back to church and all these people. So that, that, that is a, a powerful, um, yeah, powerful witness to people that um, mm. an average person who, you know, who doesn't want to be dragged or doesn't want, which is so much our society of today, isn't it? Mm. They, they don't want to be dragged. They want options. Mm. They, they don't want to do it to please people. They want to be sincere and real, you know, and yeah. real, which is, you know, that's what I sense you are. So very realistic and really relatable to a lot of people. Mm. Thanks. Um, so what, how do you think that you, we can reach um, people who are unchurched because that's what you're doing. People who don't have their faith, you know, like, and how does St. Benedict's do that? We have many, many strategies. Mm. Um, it really does start with the heart though. Mm. Um, and, and what I mean by that is like really having the empathy for the people. Um, mm. recognizing their needs um, and if and if we are to recognize their needs we need to get to know them mm. so we we put a lot of emphasis on building community mm. um, drawing people into friendships um, we want meaningful community you know if you can't be or if you can't get to know the person beside you, um, mm. how, how are you going to get to know God? Mm. It's that, that whole philosophy. Um, so yeah, the events that we develop, the different um, gatherings that we do, mm. that, that's the core of it. Does yeah, that make that's sense? That's fantastic because um, I have some people, friends who are not involved in church. Mm. And when they came through the door at um, one of your events, which was Alpha, about you know exploring faith, exploring the possibilities, mm -hmm. she was uh, amazed how welcome she felt, and it was very relationship orientated, not you know, mm. not um, come to this, come to that, but just wanting to get to know her. Yeah, yeah, the the whole notion of um, being known before we tell you about our conversion or or mm. where you'd find happiness, it's, it's such a priority. Yeah. Yes, it's not a like preach or shove something down one's throat, but yeah. really yeah. acceptance, love and care. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I remember bringing even a young person who was a little bit streetwise and he felt so welcome that he always talks about St. Benedict's and also you because you, you helped him through Alpha feel mm. connected. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the key, the connection. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's all about relationships and community. Yeah. Which is fantastic. But how do you deal with, um, with the fact that there's so many people and how do you get everyone to have a... Obviously, they can't all have a relationship with Stephanie. So mm. how do you impart that to the church? Um, we recognize that at some point that there's a few of us, there's not enough of us to build those relationships. Mm. Um, so, so right now there's a big emphasis on like a culture change within the community, right? Mm. Um, we don't want it to be a weekend thing where you come and you smile and you're friendly. Um, we want to shift it to being friends. Mm. Um, and as more people are aware of this value, they, they'll just change, you know? They'll, mm. go, they'll take the step to go a little bit deeper. Mm. Um, and we can see that changing, right? The more we talk about it, the more we, we, um, we testify to it, there's, you know, we, we get people to share mm. how it's really impacted them. Um, I can see it changing. That's yeah. fantastic because I think in the past, churches were very, focus on bottoms on seats, you know, how many people yeah. did I get to church, you know, how many people um, came for an altar call, an altar call meaning people coming up to the front saying, I've accepted Jesus. Yeah. But then 
um, they weren't followed up, you know. People yeah. didn't get to know them and they didn't yeah. become part of the community. And I suppose being um, someone who goes to St. Benedict's, I think you all have things like small groups, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Which is a way of connecting people. And you can't lead all those groups, but the leaders can lead others. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so who's the source of your strength in the ministry? Oh, there's, there's many sources um, from my team to our lead, our parish priests, hmm. to, to the community yeah. and, and obviously God. <laughs> on, the, on that note, so they can hear more about that support, yeah. we'll go for a break now. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Stephanie Tan. She's the mission coordinator of St. Benedict's Burwood. Welcome back. Thanks, Geraldine. Oh, you, you shared about how you um, got your strength. So how do you get your strength to do ministry? Because I know you're doing a big task. Yeah, well, I said um, from the people I work with, Mm. Um, and from also seeing, um, I guess, this, the fruits of, of the work um, mm. from God, definitely. Um, yeah. yeah. So prayer is an important part of your life? Oh, I, th I think it's a bit more than prayer. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think it's like that dependence or yeah. the reliance, you know. Um, yeah, it's the power source. It, someone said to me, um, they pr pray to them is like the electricity to keep the energy going. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't know how to put it. Maybe because my definition of prayer, like how I understand it's different, but like, I feel I need to be tethered, mm. which is the same as electricity, I suppose. Then there needs to be a, a line. Mm. Um, well, wow. to, to God. Um, yeah, source. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. And with um, your prayer time and with, you know, what, um, what sort of things that St. Benedict's does in the parish that, that really meets the needs of people? Do you mean what kind of events or programs do we have? Yes. Um, we have many and mm. they're, they're in different categories. Um, at, at the at one level where I, as I've shared you know we're very um, focused on building relationships we've got a lot of social events um, then we also have this thing called alpha the alpha program where people come it's it's very informal it runs for quite a few weeks um, there is a lot of exploration and space to question those big questions that we don't usually get opportunity to, like, you know, mm. at the at work or at the water cooler, you're, you're not going to ask your friend, so what do you think the meaning of life is? Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, um, so we create those spaces where those conversations can be had. Um, yeah, does, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. And, and I remember because I attended one of your alphas, it's so down to earth, like we were playing um, outside games and, and we're yeah. chatting and the yeah. food was fantastic. I mean, you have yeah. a great troop of uh, people to cook for Alpha. and Correct. It's, it has to mirror life outside a church, you know, and mm. that's what we, we try to bring to our events. It, it, you, you don't want to go there and then feel like, oh, this is such a different space. It has to be something that you've, you're comfortable in, mm. right? I know some of <laughs> my friends have come said they came for the food initially, uh, <laughs> but they many said people say that. Yeah. But they said now they said they come even when there's even when there's not a big banquet. They said they still come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because <laughs> which is um, they're still being fed. They're yeah, nourished yeah. by that 
you know, that relationship, right? Yeah, they said that the people are so friendly that when they walk through the door, they felt so loved and accepted oh, that, that nice even though know. there wasn't the food, um, you know, later down the track, I think, I think after the 15th week um, with the second program, you all didn't have as, you know, big banquets, but they yeah. still came. They said, I'm still coming without the food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they felt fed in the spirit and relationship so that's great so i suppose alpha is one of those programs that people who don't have faith can come along and explore and just yeah. feel comfortable whether you do or you don't have faith it's it's a great starting point because what i've noticed is you may have faith but you may not have an opportunity to really explore it or discuss it mm. it, it gives you that you know um Apart from Alpha, we also have other courses or programs that go a lot deeper. You know, mm -hmm. when, when you feel like you, you kind of are already in relationship with God and you really want to deepen that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got s stuff going on for that. Um, at the moment, we're running Life in the Spirit. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, and marriage courses, relationship yeah. courses. Um, I've seen courses like on suffering, like the meaning of suffering. Yeah. So it's wonderful how you're reaching many levels. Yeah, yeah, it's a broad spectrum. Um, one very popular one was a philosophy one that mm. we did, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think people are also drawn to, to how science and God, how do they sit together? Um, mm. And yeah, we, we think it's important to, to figure that out. Yes, and I like that non-judgmental attitude and and a culture of acceptance. You know, mm. you know, kind of um, not uh, you know accepting, and also you don't charge for your alpha, which is amazing because mm. I see such fantastic food and and there's no charge even. Yeah, it, it's the community right behind that that has mm. the heart for it that mm. want to also participate by feeding people like yeah. It's, it's very beautiful, actually. Oh, wow. I felt the love through the food, <laughs> besides the friendship. Yeah. Um, yeah, so when is your next Alpha? Uh, the next one is in September. Oh, right. And yeah, so we run two a year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if people who see the show want to connect even before September, they can ring you maybe at St. Benedict's? Yeah, yeah. Just, just Google St. Benedict's Burwood and our website has a lot of information all the information that that they need if they are just you know looking us up yeah mm. and i love the fact that um when you went to church you know you just sat there and you experienced love uh, mercy and unconditional love you know and yeah and um and that is what i think comes across at saint benedict's and when I think back about that time, I really started to understand that whole mustard seed, um, mm. what do you call it, parable story, yes. mm -hmm. um, because it really was that size. Like I had no idea what I was doing in the church. It felt absurd, you know. Um, mm. I was looking for my dad but something else found me, you know, wow. it's, it's so amazing. Yes, I mean, some people might, might use the word Father God. Yeah, it w I, I see it as that now. Um, mm. Yeah, so it's wonderful, and I wish you all the best in your you. ventures. Thank and you. I hope I can get you back when you're freer in a few months' time. Sure, I'd love to be back. God Thanks, bless Charlie. you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye and God bless you.